Hi, my name is Steve, and today I wanted to give you a behind-the-scenes look as I start working on a new stop-motion animation project. And I'm using my fully motorized stop-motion camera rig using Dragon Frame software. I am going to take my 3D printer that I am going to put on the table and I'm not going to do a 3D printing time lapse, although I have done some of those if you want to check those out on my channel. In this one, I am going to be taking the Sticky Bones character on the 3D printer and interacting with the 3D printer to make a stop motion movie. The character is much larger in scale to the 3D printer than what I want. So in order to get the look and feel I'm going for, I want the character to be much smaller and interacting. So when it stands on the print head of the 3D printer, it doesn't look huge. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is using the Dragon Frame software with my stop motion rig, I am going to do some camera movements of just the 3D printer. Then I'm going to remove that I'm going to do the exact same camera movement, which is the nice thing with having a motorized controlled rig. And I am going to then animate the Sticky Bones character against the green screen and composite the two together so I can scale the size of the Sticky Bones character. So let's get right into setting it up. So we're gonna get started with opening up Dragon Frame. I have my camera rig uh, all set up. You'll hear there's probably some noise in the background as there's a lot of fans that I have cooling uh, all the different components and motors. So apologize for that, but we'll do our best to talk through this. So I'm gonna launch Dragon Frame. I have everything connected to my computer. And this isn't going to be a lesson in how to configure Dragon Frame and connect all the stepper motors. I have a previous video on my channel that you can go check out. I'll have links in the description. But I'm going to create a new scene and I'm just going to leave it at the defaults. I am going to change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. You can also change that afterwards. Dragon Frame opens. It tells me that I'm connected to my DF Moco Arduinos. I have two of them, so I'm okay there. You can see my camera comes in uh, already set up. One thing I need to do is load in the motion uh, arc motion control tab. I am going to import my settings. So one of the things that's nice once you set up all of your motors and have all the access axes and everything configured you can export that and then import it anytime you need it and don't have to set that up every time so my art access setup I am going to take this is out on my desktop I'm going to import this and now this brings in all of my previously made motion control sliders and everything that I need to now animate the camera and the table. And for what we're going to do for our initial test, so I am going to show you a little bit of doing keyframing in Dragon Frame software. And the keyframing is then what will become the repeatable pattern. So once you set up your keyframes and your motion, you can also export that and import it at any time. So right now I am going to change my scene. I only have 48 frames and I'm doing 30 frames per second. So if I want to make this, uh, let's say I want to do a 8 second clip, uh, I'm going to do 320 frames to get me uh, 8 seconds. So as I drag this out, You'll now see I can drag the slider to get into the individual frames or drag it out to see my full, uh, actually I did more than eight, I did about 10. But for this, I plan on doing about eight seconds. So I can just drag this to an eight second window. 
And right now, you'll see everything is zeroed out from my motors. So this is my start point. Everything starts at the zero. So you always want to set a zero point for all of your motors. But now that I'm on frame one, I can move my camera, I can move the table, I can adjust everything and set a keyframe for each of the individual stepper motors. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to want to uh, tilt my camera so that as the camera tilts down, you'll see now I can get it focused on the 3D printer. I may want to also slide the camera a little over here. So I'm going to have it start off to the side. I can also rotate the camera so that it points a little bit more getting the 3D printer centered and again all of this being somewhat of a test that I'm doing. So now you want to set a keyframe. I do a keyframe for all of the motors. It's just easier to do a keyframe all and so once you do that it will now add a keyframe at frame one in that position. So now at four seconds when I am about halfway through, now I want to do some movements. I want to adjust the position of where things are. So we're going to take the camera slide. I'm going to bring it uh, more back to the center of the model, about ha or the model, the printer. We're going to also move it down. So I'm going to have this come down a little bit. Maybe I am going to have the table slide backwards a little bit to get a little more of the view. I am going to take and rotate the camera. And we're going to tilt maybe just a little bit up to see most of the... So now once I've set everything where I want it to be, I now have to set keyframes. And once you set those keyframes, you will see that Dragon Frame is interpolating all of the steps in between to go from point A to point B at four seconds. And now going at eight seconds, we'll go to the end, bring the table closer, take the camera, tilt it down to be more on the bed and it's gonna look like the camera maybe zoomed in a little bit and we can even do somewhat of a rotation and slide it over. Now we'll set another keyframe and now all of those motions, I just did those three. Now you can do some testing along the way. So let's say at about six seconds, I wanna see where does that put me. So with that, you can do this and you can move all of the motors to where they would be at that time frame. It's not actually setting any keyframes, it's just going to show you, okay, at six seconds, here's where the camera is going to be and do you feel good with that position or do you want to make some slight adjustments here? So maybe I want to tilt it a little bit up so that it gets a little more in view there and now what I can do is set a keyframe for that tilt so it will make that adjustment in between. Let's get everything back to frame one, reset all the motors and now that will be ready to capture. And now there's a couple of different things you can do. Within Dragon Frame, the first test I want to do is I am going to actually have it make a preview movie for me. So there is a uh, run a test of the move, and then there is a movie of the test move. And it is going to take and move the camera along and actually run through this and do a low res preview. So let's take a look. It's gonna take a little while, so we will speed up through this. I am gonna do all the frames there's a little bit of a time for the camera to settle in between each one, but
but otherwise we're just going to let this run as is. Okay, so now that the movie is finished, now let's take and output this. This will now export the actual movie that it took. The movie has been saved. And now you can see. So, but before we watch that, what I'm going to do is show you now, once you're done in Dragonframe, let's say we're happy with the motion, we're happy with our keyframes. You want to, before you close Dragon Frame, there's a couple of things we can do here. I could export this movement, but since I've saved this file, Dragon Frame will remember all of my movements, all of my keyframes, so I don't necessarily need to export anything here. I can just reopen this project and everything will come in as it is. But you always want to re-zero out all of your stepper motors. Right now, all the stepper motors are on time frame eight, and we want them all to be at zero position. So when you first set up everything in Dragon Frame, you want to zero out all your motors. What's the default starting position that they will always be set at when you first open Dragon Frame? That way, once you load your project, you can reset everything to your keyframes in the timeline and it will move all the motors based off that zero point. And while it's not 100% perfect with uh, this type of a setup, it's these are stepper motors with you know Arduino controllers and, and not everything perfectly is repeatable. So we're gonna set everything back to the zero point. just go in here you click on each of these uh, white areas white numbers tell it you want to go back to zero it is going to move all of the motors back to the zero point which is exactly where you started and now with everything back to zero you can quit dragon frame so now that we've done the initial low res preview, I want to go back and do the second option and get the same effect, but in a different way and a little higher quality. So here we are back at our start. And the last time we went and we did a movie preview and output that, this time we're going to do the stop motion capture. And for that, you want to come over to uh, the capture area of Dragon Frame, you need to click the ready to capture option up here in the corner. You can go to the capture menu and you'll see you have your different settings for how many frames you can capture, but you also have the shoot multiple frames. So if you select that, I can now do 240 frames and when I start doing that is now simply going to start capturing one image, move, take a picture, move, take a picture, and it will do all 240 frames automatically. Okay, so that's finished. Took about 20 minutes. So I now have 242 images that I can now save out to my computer. I tend to then import those that image sequence to make a video in my compositing software. Uh, you can also do that out of Dragon Frame, but for me I am going to go into Dragon Frame. You can export the movie if you want to export all the frames as its own uh, video, but I prefer to have the control over all the individual images, so I'm going to export an image sequence. When you export the image sequence, uh, I can do the entire all frames, tell it where I want to save it, and we will export all of those images. Then I'm gonna bring those into my video editing software, output a video, 
and we'll compare this against the movie that we did previously to show the difference. So now that we've got the first part of the shoot done, now we're gonna move on to recording the Sticky Bones character. And this is where I have my Sticky Bones character. And just to quickly go over, so I'm going to place him on the table and have the same camera movements that I had for the 3D printer. So all of that will be a one-to-one -one match. Well, close as it gets, I guess. But one of the things you have to consider, since the print bed, where I'm gonna have the character doing his movements, is probably a good three, four inches off the table. So, so if I put the Sticky Bones character on the table, you're gonna have a little different view angle from the camera. Now, in this case, that's actually what I want. Since I'm going to make the Sticky Bones character smaller in size, he would technically be lower on the table. So in this case, all I'm gonna do is take the printer off, I'm gonna put the character, but I'm gonna leave him at the table height. If you had a smaller character that you were trying to enlarge, then you might wanna put him a little higher than what the print bed was to get at least a close angle that's gonna look good when you composite the two together. So I'm gonna take and get this set up and we'll take a look at animating the character. So now I have my Sticky Bones character set up on the table with the green screen and the uh, fabric down below so I'll be able to key all of that out. And now it's time to get back into Dragon Frame, reset our camera to the original position, and I'm going to bring in the previous footage of the 3D printer in the background to see how does it look. Am I getting close to what I want? Do I have the right angles? So I opened up the original project in Dragon Frame. I deleted out all the previous images that we took of the 3D printer. So really treating this like it's a brand new scene, but it does keep then all of my original settings, my original timeline, keyframe animation, all of that. So the first thing you do, again, this is why you zero everything out. We're gonna go to frame one. I am going to now move all of the cameras, or move all the motors, I should say, to the frame one position. You'll now see that the Sticky Bones character is in position relative to where we had the 3D printer. But to see how does that look and is it really at a decent angle, the right perspective, we're gonna go into the animation tab and I'm going to load the movie that we made, the low res preview movie. Uh, you could load the image sequence that we did in the second shot. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to go out to that test movie, open it as a reference. So now it's going to load that into the scene, but it's on top of my camera. Here's my current camera, so I just want to drag it below it. So the camera's on top. The reference images are on the bottom. You can see it in the timeline down here. Now we're gonna to go to our current camera and we're gonna mask out the green screen. Now this doesn't actually, when you take a picture, this isn't keying out the green screen. This is just a visual within Dragon Frame. So if I go down, turn on the keying, you can see you can have a tolerance slider. Once you, if I come back here, if I take my eyedropper, hit an area of the screen, and then you can adjust the tolerance. And if I want to, because I'm going to scale the Sticky Bones character in my compositing software, so I'm not necessarily expecting him to be to the correct size. 
it doesn't look like he fits within uh, you know this image so if I go back to the test image I can also now move that around in the background so I could put my stick bones character here I can also take and scale that up so let's say that's about the size I'm gonna make my character does it look like he fits within that scene and for me I'd say it's pretty close I could move him maybe a little bit more forward on the uh, on the table but I actually don't mind that so this is a way of getting your proper reference and your proper angles to make sure as you go then into your compositing software the two are going to look similar so I'm going to take go through the same process I'm going to take in remove this well, I'm going to keep it in there so as I go through doing my animations so what you'll be able to do is along the timeline here you'll be able to go along and you'll see the background move then you can check where is your character in reference so this helps you with the stop motion animation and that way when you composite the two together it should look like they fit So there's the final output of my eight second composited video. I was pretty pleased with the outcome overall. Always things I can do better. But if you enjoyed this, if you found this helpful, learning a little bit more about Dragon Frame and some of the ways of going about doing different animated clips using a stop motion rig, I would really appreciate it if you'd like. Hit the subscribe button, helps me out a lot with the channel. If there's anything that I missed, anything you'd like me to go more into or do some future videos on, please leave a comment. If you do stop motion animation and anything like this with Dragon Frame and motorized controllers, any tips you can give me, I'm still learning and trying to build up my skill sets. So really appreciate it and I hope to see you in the next one.